In this video, we're going to be taking a look at four topics, 1.3 through 1.6. Introduction to biological macromolecules, properties of biological macromolecules, structure and function of biological macromolecules, and nucleic acids. The organic carbon-based molecules that are important to the function of living things can be classified based on their structure and their function. The four most important of these groups are carbohydrates, proteins, nucleic acids, and lipids. Each of those groups of macromolecules has responsibilities in the sustainment and propagation of life. Regardless of the category of macromolecule in question, all are constructed using the same chemical process. This process is called dehydration synthesis. The reason for this name is because it involves the removal of atoms from the smaller reactant molecules in order to form water and build a larger product molecule. We will see specific examples of this reaction when we explore the individual macromolecules one by one. The process used to deconstruct macromolecules is simply the reverse of dehydration synthesis. Hydrolysis requires water as a reactant as it is necessary to separate the individual building blocks or monomers from the larger polymer. The hydrolysis of macromolecules is one of the early steps in the digestion of foods. Both dehydration synthesis and hydrolysis are reactions that are catalyzed by a variety of enzymes, which we will learn more about in a later topic. The first macromolecule we're going to take a look at is carbohydrates. Carbohydrates, or carbs, are also known as sugars and are the primary source of energy for practically all cells. Some common examples of the simplest carbohydrates are glucose, fructose, and galactose. These are known as hexose sugars because they each possess six carbon atoms in their structure. Deoxyribose and ribose, found in DNA and RNA respectively, are examples of pentose sugars as they contain five carbon atoms each. Those individual building blocks are called monosaccharides and are commonly linked together to form more complex carbohydrates. This is accomplished via dehydration synthesis and forms a bond between monosaccharides called a glycosidic linkage. These more complex carbohydrates are important in longer term storage of energy and in the formation of some organisms' structural components. Plants store carbohydrates in chain-like structures and branched structures, collectively referred to as starch. Animals store carbohydrates in the form of glycogen, a highly branched, complex carbohydrate. In the exoskeletons of arthropods, like insects, spiders, and crustaceans, as well as the cell walls of fungi, Bundles of carbohydrate chains, called chitin, provide for structure, strength, and protection. But the most abundant organic molecule on Earth is a carbohydrate. This carbohydrate, called cellulose, is used to construct the cell walls of plants. It is comprised of long chains of glucose molecules connected by glycosidic linkages, which are then stacked on top of one another held in place by hydrogen bonds. This arrangement confers great strength to the plant cell walls individually, and summed up for the entire organism, makes it possible for plants to grow to great heights. Inside cells, the most numerous molecules are a second category of macromolecules, proteins. Proteins play a role in practically every aspect of a cell's functions. The individual building blocks of proteins are called amino acids. Amino acids are linked together in long chains to form a polypeptide. That polypeptide is folded and shaped into a functional molecule called a protein. The 20 amino acids found in organisms can be grouped based on their properties. Some are hydrophobic, some hydrophilic, some basic, and a couple are acidic.
you may recognize in this illustration that all 20 amino acids have a shared structure and a unique structure. The shared component, shaded in a grayish color, is called the backbone and contains the amino group. The unique portion, shaded in yellow, green, pink, or blue, is called the side chain or R group. It's this R group that grants each amino acid its unique chemical properties. Just as with carbohydrates, amino acids are linked together via dehydration synthesis, and this resulting bond is called a peptide bond. In order for a protein to function properly, it must assume a specific shape. The types and positions of amino acids in a polypeptide chain are what determine how the polypeptide will conform into a three-dimensional shape. All proteins have three levels of structure. The first and simplest level is simply a chain of amino acids. At one end is the functional amino group and at the other end is the carboxyl group. This is called primary structure. Secondary structure involves the formation of hydrogen bonds between different regions of the backbone of the polypeptide chain. These hydrogen bonds cause some regions of the polypeptide to form a corkscrew-like shape called an alpha helix, while other regions form zigzag structures called beta pleated sheets. Depending on the length of the polypeptide, there could be numerous alpha helices and beta pleated sheets that form. Tertiary structure is dependent upon the interactions between the R groups of different amino acids. R groups with a positive charge can be attracted to R groups with a negative charge to form an ionic bond. R groups that are both hydrophobic will fold in on each other to avoid being in contact with water. Two R groups also interact with one another to establish a hydrogen bond. Those R groups that contain sulfur can covalently bond to one another, resulting in the creation of a disulfide bridge. Primary, secondary, and tertiary structure are present in every protein. Some proteins, however, are the result of more than one polypeptide chain associating together. These proteins are said to have quaternary structure. Transerythrin, which is a hormone transport protein, is the result of four identical polypeptides joined together. The protein collagen, which is important in many connective tissues, like those in our skin, tendons, and ligaments, is the result of three polypeptides twisted around each other. So to summarize, primary structure is a chain of amino acids, secondary structure involves interaction among the backbone, Tertiary structure involves interaction between R groups, and quaternary structure, if present, is the result of multiple polypeptides associating together. Nucleic acids are responsible for storing and transmitting genetic information. In eukaryotic cells, DNA is found stored within the nucleus and in prokaryotic cells is free-floating in the cytosol in a region called the nucleoid. In both cases, the cell's genetic material is copied so that the resulting offspring cells have a complete, accurate set of genetic information. The individual monomers of nucleic acids are called nucleotides and are joined together by dehydration synthesis. Individual nucleotides are constructed of three smaller components, a phosphate functional group, a pentose sugar, and one of five nitrogen-based molecules. In a much later unit, we will explore the significance of each of those nitrogenous bases. The resulting nucleotide is structured with the five carbon sugar at the center, the phosphate group bonded to the carbon in that sugar that's outside of the ring, and the unique base portion bonded to a carbon in the ring. The five carbons in the sugar can be identified individually with a numbering system. The number five carbon, more accurately called the five prime carbon, is where the phosphate group is attached. The one prime carbon is where the nitrogen base is bonded, and the three prime carbon possesses a hydroxyl group, which, as we've seen before, is important in dehydration synthesis. 
In a nucleic acid, two nucleotides are joined together by a phosphodiester bond, which exists between the three prime carbon of one nucleotide and the five prime carbon of another. In DNA, which is a nucleic acid comprised of two strands of nucleotides, those two strands are held together by the presence of hydrogen bonds between the bases. The adenine and thymine base pair form two hydrogen bonds, whereas the guanine cytosine base pair form three. The relationship between DNA and RNA, where DNA provides information for the construction of RNA, which in turn provides information for the construction of a protein, will be explored in much greater detail at a later time. While it's true that DNA and RNA have more in common than not, there are three important structural differences that make it easy to distinguish between the two. First is the fact that DNA is comprised of two strands of nucleotides, where RNA is a single strand. The second difference resides with the sugar in the nucleotides. DNA uses deoxyribose and RNA has ribose. The slight single oxygen atom difference between the two can be observed in these illustrations. The third and final difference is found in the nitrogenous bases that the molecules possess. While three of the bases, adenine, guanine, and cytosine are identical, only DNA has thymine and only RNA has uracil. Although they are structurally similar to one another, thymine is more chemically stable than uracil, making it better for the long-term stability and storage of genetic information. Finally, let's take a look at the fourth macromolecule, lipids. Lipids are an important energy source molecule, necessary for the formation of cell membranes, and help to provide cushioning and insulation for organisms. Lipids are also known as fats, and unlike carbs, proteins, and nucleic acids, are not considered to be polymers. This is due to the fact that two very different kinds of subunits are required to build them. Constructing a lipid requires a glycerol molecule and fatty acids. Glycerol is a three carbon compound with three hydroxyl groups. Fatty acids are long hydrocarbon chains with a carboxyl group found at one end. Although lipids are not polymers, they are constructed using the same dehydration synthesis reaction. The, the bond formed between a fatty acid and a glycerol is called an ester linkage. When three fatty acids are linked to a single glycerol, a triglyceride results. All glycerol molecules are identical, but the same cannot be said of fatty acids. Fatty acids differ in their length based on the number of carbon atoms present, as well as the types of covalent bonds found in the chain. Fatty acid chains that are comprised solely of single covalent bonds are called saturated. On the other hand, the presence of a double covalent bond results in an unsaturated fat. Polyunsaturated fatty acids contain more than one double covalent bond. Saturated and unsaturated fats have different chemical properties because of their bonding structure. Saturated fats are more prevalent in animal tissues, tend to be solid at room temperature, and are more easily stored by cells thanks to their flat, linear nature. Unsaturated fats are more commonly found in plant tissue, tend to be liquid at room temperature, and because of the bend caused by the double bond present, are not as easily stored in cells. A special and critically important kind of lipid is called a phospholipid. While all other lipids are hydrophobic, phospholipids are amphiphilic. This means that the molecule possesses both hydrophilic and hydrophobic regions. The fatty acid tails bonded to the glycerol are unable to interact with water due to their nonpolar nature. The hydrophilic head, which is comprised of a phosphate group and choline, both of which have charges, allow the head to interact readily with water. When two layers of phospholipids are used to construct a cell's membrane, 
the hydrophilic head is in contact with the aqueous internal environment of the cell, as well as the aqueous external environment. The central region of the membrane, where the tails are found, are oriented away from water, establishing a hydrophobic core of the membrane that is largely water-free. It is this phospholipid bilayer, along with a number of other molecules, that form the boundary between the external environment and the inside of the cell with its contents. That concludes the video on these four topics. Thanks for watching, and until next time, take care.